How big do you think is the universe? If you are a sci-fi fan who has read books and watched shows based on the same, you will know that it is spread across billions and billions of kilometers. There have been so many movies that show people traveling through space, journeying across planets, stars, comets, meteors, and so many other things that you can't even name. But you know, once upon a very long time ago, all the particles in this universe were packed in one tight, dense ball. Just imagine, this ball held the entire universe. But then, things just got too heated up. There was so much heat that one day, about 15 billion years ago, BAM! There was a big bang and the whole thing exploded. Pieces of the universe went flying into space. The fireballs became stars. The other pieces became planets, meteors, etc. and spread all over. Our planet, our Mother Earth, is also a part of this great big expanding universe. Everything in this universe is made up of matter. And that's what we learn about matter in all our surroundings. Everything that you see is made up of matter. This glass is made up of matter. The water inside it is made up of matter. The air that we breathe is made up of matter. Even I am made up of matter. What's the matter? Confused? Don't be. It's all very simple. Matter is any substance that has mass, has volume, and can be perceived by the senses. Wow, that was a nice bit of cool air. But there are some exceptions. Let's look at them. Heat, electricity, light, sound, magnetism, shadow, and even vacuum. These things are not matter. Why? Although you can perceive some of these with your senses, they have no mass or volume. But scientists today classify matter in two ways. First is based on physical properties and second based on chemical properties. If you look at any matter according to its physical properties, you will be able to classify it as either being solid, liquid or gas. These are properties you already know. But there are two more physical states that you will learn about later in this lesson which you might never have heard of. And they are plasma and Bose-Einstein condensate. Well, those were physical properties. Now on the basis of chemical properties, you can classify matter into categories of elements, compounds and mixtures. Now that's a mixture I really like. Let us learn something more about the states of matter. We know that there are three common states of matter, namely solid, liquid and gas. And we also mentioned two more lesser known states called plasma and Bose-Einstein condensate in our previous video, which we will soon learn. Everything I have here before me is a solid substance. Let me take this cube. In solids, the particles of matter are bound so tightly together that there is no place for them to move. There is very little kinetic energy. So, they simply vibrate in the same position. And that's why solids have definite shape and volume and cannot be compressed. When something has a definite shape and volume, we call it rigid. Thus, rigidity is the main characteristic of solids. And that's why they cannot flow like liquids or diffuse like gases and they are not compressible. Next, let's study liquids. In liquids, you know there is more space between particles and therefore the kinetic energy of the particles is more than that in solids. And therefore, particles move about freely and randomly throughout the liquid. However, they do not have enough kinetic energy to break out of the boundary of the liquid mass. So even though liquids do not have definite shapes 
and they flow or diffuse freely, but they do have a definite volume. The space between the particles is also not enough to compress them. Next, we come to gases. The particles in gases are like free birds. So the attraction between the particles of a gas is negligible. They are not packed together and they have so much kinetic energy that they break all boundaries and move about in every random direction. That is why gases have no definite shape or volume and they flow and diffuse easily. And because the spaces between the particles are huge, gases are highly compressible. Let's start with the plasma state. The plasma is the fourth state of matter. It is similar to the gaseous state except that it is not made up of neutral gaseous particles. Instead, plasma is a mixture of free electrons and ions. The state consists of super energetic and super excited particles that are present in the form of ionized gases. Plasma is made by heating a gas to such high temperatures that the gas molecules lose all their electrons. Where can you find it? Well, you will need to travel a small distance to the sun or any other star. Because nowhere else on earth is the temperature so high that it can give rise to the plasma state. Let's move on to the final state, which is the Bose-Einstein condensate or BEC. The theory of BEC was developed by two super scholars. The first was an Indian physicist named Satyendranath Bose, who spoke about this state in 1920. And later on, the well-known Albert Einstein also predicted a new state of matter which became known as the Bose-Einstein condensate. The BEC state is achieved when gases with extremely low density are cooled to extremely low temperature. The atoms are not able to move at all and collapse into a single quantum state. Sounds like a lot of fancy stuff, doesn't it? Well, don't worry. That's all you need to know about the BEC state. So, what have you learned so far? You've learned about three common states of matter and two not so common states of matter and their characteristics. Next, we learn how matter changes from one state to another. Tutamate for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.